Hello everyone, uh, and back to the speed runs. We're gradually improving our rating. The idea of these videos is I'm going to tell you typical mistakes that you make, how to overcome them, the kind of things you should be avoiding, and the kind of things you should be doing at the rating level we're playing at here, which is 1200 to about 1400. We're about 1300 rating now. And I'm really going to try to explain everything I'm doing in these five minute games while we increase our rating. Now I'm going to play the black line. If you've been following my previous speedrun videos, you'll, you'll know about this opening. And it really, I like breaking openings down in stages. And this last move is already a mistake of my opponent. He should always be aware of pawn breaks. And now by playing this move here, which uh, is the logical move in the black line, he's gonna lose a tempo because his bishop here has to move again. You don't wanna lose tempos earlier on. I'm also not sure about this idea of taking on e5. You wanna keep the tension in the position. So it's a symmetrical position, pawn structure wise. That's when the pieces become extra uh, important because obviously you've got to rely on pieces for your advantage. And I wanna develop my bishop and castle I'm just simply thinking, where is the best square for my bishop? I'm gonna move it here. It looks like a, a useful pin. Maybe later on, I can aim to win the pawn there. Now I could double my opponent's pawns or I could retreat and keep the pin. Now they're both quite attractive. I think I'm gonna keep the tension. A lot of stronger players like doing this. They like keeping the tension. I don't mind bringing my bishop back here because that could be a very useful diagonal. I, I'm going to simply castle um, and my opponent again releasing the tension. This is another classical mistake. Why play that move when it's not forced? You know, there's no reason to take that. Don't release the tension. That was a very useful pin. And now by me capturing back, I mean, there's a couple of ways I could do this. Um, it's It's a very playable and pleasant position yes he's got this idea but this is really only a one move idea um and i'm just thinking now i'm gonna put the queen here create my own threat if his bishop moves i might be able to take there yeah he's got a good knight but it's a little bit artificial that one he gave up a very good bishop oh 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 <laughs> what have i done <laughs> oh, i was just testing him just to see if he was aware, you know, just to see if he's aware of the possibility. Do you really think I'd fall for something like that? Get the rook there as quickly as I can. <laughs> God, blimey, governor. Um, I should have obviously been a bit more careful there and just kept the queen covering that square. But uh, again, you know, tactics may come and bite you in the bottom, obviously. But the idea of giving up that bishop, we'll have a look at this game afterwards. It's still not the right idea in my opinion. Uh, oh, that was a bit of a lucky a lucky escape though. Um, this is not the Queen's Sacrifice video. Uh, <laughs> speed run, maybe at some point. And and now, okay, if, if, if we go back to this, I, I've won a pawn, but more importantly, let's just compare the pieces. My opponent has to get castled and he's gonna, it's gonna take him two moves to do this, but this extra pawn of mine is very useful. Now, you should always look for pawn breaks as well and look at every area of the board and you could even say my opponent has a bit of space here but sometimes when your opponent moves the pawns too, for, too far forwards they come overextended and this move a5 is a very good move in, in such positions because I want to try to take advantage of those overextended pawns so I'm switching play to the other side I also have a dark square bishop my opponent doesn't so if I can open up those dark squares that would be very useful and here, what I'm gonna take here, because he can't take with a pawn, and now we're gonna see that my dark square bishop, which I've just mentioned, can come to life here, um, attacking that queen, and putting that knight under a bit of an uncomfortable pin. So the pressure is really, really building uh, in, in this position. I can't believe I blundered my queen there. And <laughs> my opponent now has, well, he's moved his queen into a square where I can take a pawn with tempo. So things are looking very, very good now. Still gotta be careful, you know, 
one thing you'll read a lot about in chess books is that analogy of um, oh uh, the rest is a matter of technique when you get a winning position don't fall for that that is that's absolute rubbish only relax in a game of chess when your opponent resigns and here I want to keep the pressure up with this pin I mentioned so I'm gonna pressurize that knight there by throwing the knight in but you should never ever relax in a game of chess I found in my own games chess is a really hard encounter and I'm really mainly trying to show you these speed run five minute games um, to uh, to improve your long play chess your tournament chess and one thing I found in my games is that and again this rook is now pinned there's no point taking it away I like keeping the pressure is that I relax sometimes if I had a five hour game I could do four hours of really hard work get a very nice position and then I'd relax and that's when your opponent is most dangerous it's like he's a backed he's an animal backed against the wall he's gonna fight for his life so it really is important to prepare yourself mentally even in some respects for a very hard and long battle and um, well here it's looking very bad for my opponent isn't it with this uh, horrendous pressure uh, that the rook is under here and um, uh, again you know don't this is you know what i think the one thing about this game yeah my opponent could have won the queen he didn't but if you see the note the difference in the way we're playing he moved his bishop here and then he took that knight um let's just go back there he's resigned here in a hopeless position well first of all his bishop moves were wrong this one here lost the tempo you've got to look out for these central pawn breaks you can't lose time at the start of the game careful when you develop your pieces into squares they might get attacked on and even though his idea nearly well nearly worked out in hindsight I'd probably take this knight in future the other mistake I think he made was here I would never really consider taking this knight myself I don't think many strong players would you at least wait until black plays h6 in this position which I might have played anyway develop your piece somewhere get your pieces in the game automatically swapping off there just seems like a big mistake talking about mistakes though I took here keeping an eye on this one and here I was a little bit lax here I should just move my queen back and then kick that knight away with a very nice position I feel but my opponent now misses this check phenomenal but to be fair in this position it all goes very downhill to him again this queen move not a very good move there you've got to think about your development and he's keeping that bishop uh, well basically rammed in uh, well not undeveloped should we say so let's see if we can use this opening again in the next game I'm gonna play the black line so stage one setup is I bring my knights to the center and I plonk my central pawn on this square now obviously I've got to watch out for what my opponent's doing but let's bring this knight out with a little threat and now that my opponent has played a different setup you've got to adapt and actually here um, my opponent's played a very interesting setup he might well play f4 here and go for what we call a Grand Prix position and I could go for this but without a pawn on d4 I'm gonna think of other options and I'm thinking now well he hasn't got control of his dark squares in the middle of the board so I'm actually gonna play c5 and the reason is I don't want to put my knight on this square it seems quite passive I want to put my knight here because I want to fight for that central square my opponent is controlling that central square and also maybe the Queen is coming over here this is actually I think a theoretical position and I now got to think about how I get castled so I need to develop this bishop I don't really want to block this bishop of mine in by playing the pawn here and it seems that the center of the board might be quite important with my opponent maybe advancing there so I'm thinking about the best places to put my pieces and my bishop being shadowed in this structure seems best because I'll be aiming against this now this move may well have worked if I brought out my bishop but in this position I will play e6 I know that's a move I said I don't want to play but he's also made this rather committal move of moving his queen which he's now moved back I've noticed so many times at this kind of like uh, rating range that people they're not very respectful of tempos that was a loss of two tempo yes I've played e6 but is that a big deal I really don't think so because it can help me go d5 and You've got to be very careful about losing tempo don't just bring your queen out and then bring it back don't bring your queen out 
Now, when an opponent moves a piece into your half of the board, um, often a good idea just to give it a kick, which I'm going to do here. If he gives up his bishop for my knight, well, then I get very good control over the center. This way around, I'm just going to castle, completing my development. I don't like doing anything too drastic until I've got good development. And now that I have, I've got to think about I could bring this bishop out, so I could try to bring it here. But again, like in that last game you saw, look for pawn moves that take the center that gain tempo. And in this position, with my opponent's bishop here, I can play d5. I can gain some central squares because I'm taking advantage of my pawn being here. And I gain this tempo on that bishop, just like the last game. So I now want to bring my last piece into the game. I could pin the knight, but he might then go h3, and I have to give my bishop up. And it looks to me like just bringing it here, attacking, creating a threat, always good to create threats, is the best option. I've now developed all my pieces. I'm going to play just normal moves. Open file, what you put on an open file. I put a rook there. So I haven't really, again, a lot of these games in this speed run thing, I haven't really done any calculation, any big tactics. Here, I'm not worried about g4 because that opens his king position. I want to connect my rooks and then maybe just double my rooks on the open file. To do that, I need to move my queen. Now, I could go over here trying to grab a pawn, but I want to keep it more centralized. And I'm just going to bring it here. Maybe some ideas that way at some point. Always look at your opponent's last move. Yes, he's threatening a pawn, but moving the king to defend that is often a very sensible and normal way just to guard that pawn I don't need to worry about that my opponent's pieces are not looking great to me they're very cramped that knight and rook is not developed and um, I'm not really sure what they're doing and I haven't done anything special at all in this game I want to just maximize my pieces I want to win this game without actually doing anything which is you know it's like that iceberg there's a lot going on underneath the iceberg that big mass but still, you know, you, you, you know, you can get to that level by just, you know, improving little by little. And here again, I'm looking where that knight's going. The knight going there attacking my queen is a bit annoying. So I'm just going to stop that knight. Knight's on the rim are dim. I'm keeping that knight sidetracked. I might even better advance, gain some space over there with my B pawn. Uh, but I'm really thinking this rook is the only piece not really developed. And something now like bringing my rook into the seventh rank doubling up on the open file to me looks very logical that's one thing i'm doing moving the b pawn could be very useful is my opponent doing anything with that bishop there well he has blundered and this is often what happens winning a game without doing anything i've just moved my pieces to good squares at this level you can do that i move my bishop there to attack the pawn he's not threatening anything no so i'm simply now going to take that pawn and often this is something you can, I, again, you just play good moves and wait for the mistake. Here, I'm gonna grab the rook because it's a rook. And now, well, I like gaining space. This is a good space move. I could try to develop my rooks, double them, but I'm thinking here, okay, he's lining up against my queen. Any danger? No. Any threats? No. Let's double my rooks now. I might as well get impro improve this one. My pawn there as well defended. Is his knight going anywhere? No, I don't have to worry about that. I keep improving. And soon I'm going to have to start moving quickly. Um, now I material up. I want to make exchanges. This bishop move doesn't work. I get rid of his knight. So I'm now going to try and make exchanges because the more pieces I can exchange off, the greater my material advantage becomes. Let's just watch out for things. Still got complete control here. And um, next move, I could try to take the center. I should have actually moved my queen into e2 there. That would have been a much better idea, uh, which I'm going to do now. I should have done this move ago. I just want to make exchanges. Let's get rid of that queen. Okay, my pawn is on pre there. Um, so I'm just going to defend that one. I've still got my rook coming in. I've got to move quicker though. And my rook does come in and a rook on the seventh rank incredibly strong i could have gone rook all the way back there um i'm not gonna i don't want him to take that pawn i want everything in the position and i could now get rid of that one but in this position giving up your bishop for a knight can sometimes be dangerous um 
most imp and now I will take it because what's better than one rook on the St. Frank? Two rooks, and I can get my rook there. His knight would have been able to capture that rook had I not eliminated it. And now there's a famous checkmate pattern with the two rooks connecting. This is one of those checkmate patterns everyone should understand and know. And you can see I'm going to go check and bring the other one there. So, I mean, really in that game, you know, my opponent played this D3 move. He didn't take the center. And after that, I decided to change plans. So you've got to be flexible in chess. The better you get, the more you understand about taking over weakened squares. I think he should have gone F4 here to make it logical. This move, I just went developing and I'm constantly thinking, where are the best squares for my pieces? I have to be aware of my opponent's threats. So if I brought that bishop out, queen b3 would have been much better because it attacks a pawn. But here, my bishop seems better pointing towards the center and my opponent now loses this very important two tempo and that already changes the position from uh, what should be equal to worst position for him. I now played very, very sensibly. I didn't do anything special and I waited for my opponent to blunder in order to win the game. So we're getting a lot of blacks, aren't we, today? This is the day of the black openings. And what am I going to do here? Well, what opening haven't we looked at? I'm going to play one of my favourite openings, um, which is the Dutch opening. But what I'm going to do, we haven't had a D4 opening yet. Um, now in the Dutch, it's all of, it's like a reverse Sicilian. You want to you want to control here. And an opening I'm now going to play, which I rarely play, but it's a really I think. Um, great opening at lower level is the stone wall it's the only opening you can play and let's note that my opponents play d4 here rather than e4 and move one so you've got to have a different opening it's the only opening you can play as black against d4 where you get a space advantage with the black pieces there's no other openings against d4 where you get a space advantage the idea of this is you put all your pawns like a stone wall you bring your bishop out and you castle. Now my opponents release the tension on this square and this is not actually a very good move because again, you see this at this level, Pe people like exchanging pawns, better to keep the tension. And yes, he's played this rather scary looking move, but what's the actual point of that? I can't see it. I'm just gonna make sure my structure is very well protected there and I, the good thing about this structure is white can't really attack you because you defend things really well. It's very hard for white to attack you when you play the Stonewall Dutch. I think it's a very underrated opening. Even Kramnik wrote a very famous chapter on this in positional play, one of Doreski's chess books, famous Russian uh, trainer. Uh, and even Kramnik mentioned that the Stonewall is a very good opening. Magnus Carlsen's played it. Now, what am I thinking here? Well, I want to get rid of this knight. Um, can I fight for it straight away? Well, I want to get castled first. So I'm going to bring my bishop out and just get castled first before I worry about it. I've got a very solid structure, so there's no real tactical things I have to worry about. And maybe like the last game, I can win this game without doing anything. So I'm simply going to castle. Okay, now I'm castled. Um, I've done the next stage of my plan. Now, I could bring my knight here, but that pawn could be taken. And a very common idea in the Stonewall Dutch is you have this square under control by two pawns, and you use this maneuver now of bringing my knight into that square where it's extremely stable. I'm still thinking about this knight. You might be wondering, why am I not taking that knight off? Well, I really like the dark square bishop in the Stonewall Dutch because you put your pawns on light squares, and when you put your pawns on one color square, it makes the opposite color very weak, the dark squares. So I don't want to lose my dark square bishop because positionally those dark squares are weak. But I do want to fight for this square and I want to develop my last two pieces. So I'm now going to slowly try to fight for that square. More of a positional game this, but I'm just playing sensible developing moves. Now my opponent can play f4, but he's got to watch out now for a check over there. If he removes his knight, he could play f3, but again, this check looks very dangerous. You're playing pawn moves in front of your king when your king's not castled. Very dangerous. And he he's playing a lot of moves there, which 
didn't really help. Yes, it looks like this is developing's bishop. Does it really have a point? Not really. My moves kind of have a point. I'm fighting for the square and I'm allowing this check here by moving my knight into the square. And already this position, I would assume, is pretty difficult for him. So he's going for a sacrifice and this probably is his best option. I'm going to eliminate things. Um, I'm going to eliminate that knight now. So I've got two pawns and the extra exchange. And again, this guy is 1435. And I haven't done anything extraordinary here. I've just looked at the key things, this square, the two central squares, and I've played really against them. Any threats that come, I step away, make sure I'm defending this one. And my next plan is to develop this bishop somewhere. Okay. Don't want to allow this knight is coming over here. This is a nice maneuver, but I'm not going to worry. I'm going to develop my bishop. I don't want to put it here because he hit it with tempo. And I'm going to now think about the best way to defend this pawn. A little bit, a little bit of a move. Maybe I didn't want to play that 100%, but when you material up, your opponent will often get pressure. And this is the case here. He's now actually threatening to take this, but the question is can I grab another pawn? And you should always try to play the most critical move in chess and um, always take up the challenge and i'm going to take this pawn yeah my king is a little bit little bit dangerous here so this is probably why my opponent is not 12 1300 but 1400 things went wrong but he made a very good decision to get out of dodge well okay that wasn't a good decision check he made a very good decision to castle queenside and just go for some outrageous attack you know you can take many more risks when you've got a bad position but it didn't work out so just to talk about the stonewall dutch um it's an opening where you start off stage one you could say by playing these three moves it's something you play against d4 your next strategy is to play d5 and c6 so you put all your pawns on the light squares and you create a stonewall you then develop your bishop behind the pawns, that's the most active square, get castled, and then you have to think about these two pieces. How do you get those out? Magnus Carlsen liked putting his bishop on b7, uh, but Botvinnik liked bringing his bishop around this way, ex-world champion Botvinnik, if you look at his games in the Stonewall Dutch. But I think it's an extremely underrated opening, actually. Okay, we've got the white pieces, hallelujah. Now. We have been having a lot of success with the Jabava London. I'm going to keep playing that. Stage one, bring out the knight, bring out the bishop. Um, you should notice by now if you've been following the previous speed run videos. So I'm just going to do this. My opponent playing automatically, which is probably not a good idea. He's not really looking at what I'm doing. Stage two is to think about these guys. Now, if the bishop moves to this square, we're going to adapt. We don't move our knight there. We can do. But a much more aggressive plan is to go for g4 and h4. And let's just see if he keeps his tempo of moving up. Because this plan is well known, we're going to try to win that bishop. So he has slowed down at the right moment. And now there's a couple of things you can do here. But I just want to bring these two pieces into the game. And I'm trying to say my space on the king side gives me an advantage. So I'm going to now basically face off with the bishops here. And on the next move, just develop my knight. So, um, actually, in this position, um, Daniel Nari Dixki, how could I not say his name? Oh, my words. Being dyslexic, sometimes um, you just have verbal mind blanks. The legend, Daniel, I really like, and I apologize, not Nari Dixki. Why can't I say his name now? I normally say his name. This is, this is bonkers, Daniel Nari Dixki. Sorry, Daniel, I love you, really. Daniel actually takes with a pawn here. I'm going to play like Daniel because he's a, he is a legend. And the point of doubling your pawn, sometimes double pawns is, is, is okay, is that we're thinking about our opponent's moves. And this is, again, one of the main things you, you should be doing at this level, thinking about your opponent's ideas and having a response. And the idea is that the only pawn break Black has is moving this guy up. Anything else is he doesn't have any other pawn breaks. And the idea of doubling your pawns is that when he plays this, you can capture and then you can push the pawn there up to this square. So that's this kind of clever idea that Daniel, just say Daniel for now, started playing. And um, this is what we're going to go for. Okay, so my opponent has committed his king there, but that is very dangerous. 
when I have such a strong bishop. So I'm not going to do anything special. I'm just going to line my pieces up. I've got a half open file, meaning there's no pawns on that file. And you should put your rooks on those files. And um, I'm now going to just give that bishop a kick. Remember that strategy I said earlier. If your opponent moves a piece into your own half, you can give it a kick. And now I'm already thinking of ideas with this knight. His queen is very, very dodgy there but his king is over there and another way you can try to attack is just by pawn storming so i'm just going to bring the pawn here now this move if i take take he has some check coming down here i don't think it works in actual fact but i'm not really interested in my king side now i'm just going to keep this lovely bishop i'm sacrificing that pawn because i feel that the action is going to be over here and I could now connect my rooks by moving my king. That could be useful, but this is the move I'm really trying to make work. And I'm gonna now bring this one in and try to just move my pieces into a position where they can attack that. Okay, well again, he's he's not thinking about my moves here because now I can play this move with a tempo. I was gonna play that move anyway. And now because my pieces are well positioned, I can start to open up things. I'm just gonna shut the window one second. Okay, so here again, he's not really thinking, and he had to move his queen there. And this is one thing, you know, he's he's spent fifty seconds. It's such a waste of time to play blitz like this because you play blitz like this. What are you learning? If you're not looking at your opponent's ideas and not getting into their head, then I would say blitz is really you should be doing. You shouldn't be playing blitz. And the problem here is now, you know. This is on the verge of being horribly lost for him. It probably is lost. I've just got to find uh, the right killer blow. I could even just bring my queen in because he's he's pinned all over the shot. I think I'll do that. I don't want to calculate too much. He can't move his knight because it's pinned. And I'm going to win that knight next move. I'm not, I mean, there might be some tactical ideas there when knight takes knight, but I'm not even going to bother calculating that one because I feel I don't need to. This bishop is a killer. I'm just going to take the knight off and I'm gonna keep all the open lines towards his king. And I feel that his king, well, it certainly shouldn't be surviving here. Um, we should be calculating what's the best way after this. Well, queen takes looks very good. Now, again, there might be some clever ways of doing this, um, but his bishop, okay, I'm gonna go here. I'm releasing the check and I'm threatening his queen. Now, if he moves his king here, I can take that with check. I can come in here with check. And again, tactics, you've got to train your tactics. And next move, that will be checkmate. Okay. Now, I think we will leave it there. Um, please do uh, like and subscribe to this video. Our rating is slowly getting up. What were the key things today? Well, I think the key things is you can see, you don't need to have amazing tactical vision to get better. But tactics like in that game are very important. You've got to be able to spot them. So train your tactics. Know your openings well, know what setups and the classical mistakes that my opponent was doing in these videos was not really, I think in all these videos, not really looking at what I'm trying to do. My opponent in the previous ones, he moved into a pawn and lost tempo. All my opponents were losing tempo. In this game, my opponent Played pretty well, I have to say. This was the toughest game. But look, I'm lining up against his king. If I was black here, I'd be trying to get my king out of that line, something like that. And he's given me tempo. Even here, my opponent is losing tempo. He's allowing me to play moves I want to play. And, okay, this one, he does win a pawn. But, again... Where does the queen go? The queen should go here. He loses another tempo. So very important not to lose tempo in the game. Make sure you have very defined reasons for playing your moves. The key is really the most important thing. If you can't explain to yourself why you're playing a move verbally, like I'm trying to take control of the square, you probably shouldn't be playing that move. Anyway, I'll be back hopefully in more videos. Uh, please do like and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much. Bye for now.